Hello and welcome to another Science Tutor video. In this video, we're going to do a few worked examples on forces and acceleration. I'm your tutor Nathan, and if you need any other materials like a calculator and a pen or pencil and some paper, you can take the time to get them now before we start the video. So, the first question says, a 10 kilogram trolley goes from rest to 5 meters per second in 10 seconds. All right? So the information we're given is that the mass of the trolley M is equal to 10 kilograms. We know that its initial velocity U is equal to 0 meters per second because it starts from rest. And we know that its final velocity V is equal to 5 meters per second. We also know that the time interval involved is 10 seconds. So the first thing we're asked to work out is the acceleration of the trolley. Now acceleration is equal to the rate of change of velocity. So A is equal to delta V divided by T or change in velocity V minus U divided by T. If you substitute in your values v is 5, u is 0, and the time we're given is 10 seconds. So the value of acceleration is equal to 5 over 10, or 0 0.5 meters per second squared. So that's the answer for the first part. Now the next part of the question asks us to calculate the size of the net force on the trolley. For this question, you're going to use Newton's second law, which states that the net force on an object that is accelerating, F, is equal in magnitude to M times A, F equals MA. So we know that the mass of the trolley is 10 kilograms, and we know that the acceleration is what we just found, 0 0.5 meters per second squared. When you work this out, you get a value for the force acting on the trolley of 5 kilogram meters per second squared. But remember that the kilogram meters per second squared is a unit that we call 1 newton. So this answer is also equal to 5 newtons. For questions like these, it's often helpful as well if you draw a little diagram of your scenario. This is a simple question, so it's not as important. But if you draw a diagram to, to show yourself and to show whoever marks your, your working, your understanding of the problem, then it's often very helpful. In this case, the trolley is starting from rest. A force, F, is acting on it, and the trolley is accelerating. This is a very simple problem. So let's move on to another problem. Question 2 says, a 75 kilogram astronaut is preparing for a mission to the moon. Estimate 1. His weight on the Earth, where g is equal to 10 newton per kilogram, and 2. His weight on the moon, if g is approximately one-sixth of its value on Earth. So again, in working out this question, we write down the important information that we are given. The mass of the astronaut, m, is equal to 75 kilograms. The value of the gravitational acceleration on the Earth, which I'm going to call ge, is approximately 10 newtons per kilogram. Now, using Newton's second law, we know that the force acting on an object, F, is equal to m times a. The weight of an object, which is often represented by the letter w, is equal in size to the mass of the object times the gravitational acceleration, g. And it's this formula that we're going to use for this problem, for both parts of this problem. 
So for part one, the weight on Earth of the astronaut will be equal to 75 kilograms multiplied by 10 newtons per kilogram. This gives you a value of 750 newtons. Notice that the kilogram and per kilogram units cancel and you get a final answer of 750 newtons for the weight of the astronaut on the Earth. On the Moon, they say that the value of G is approximately one-sixth of its value on Earth. So G on the Moon is equal to 1 over 6 times 10, which is equal to 1.67 approximately 1.67 newtons per kilogram using the same formula for his weight we get that the weight of the astronaut on the moon is equal to 1.67 multiplied by 75 right. let me just rewrite this so that we have the mass first followed by the gravitational acceleration. You do not need to do it. You don't always need to have mass m written before gravitational acceleration g. I'm just doing it this way for clarity. Right? But you can switch them around. It's often best to write them in the same way that the formula has them written, just for clarity and to avoid any confusion. Newton per kilogram. Right. So the value of the weight of the astronaut on the moon is 125.3 newtons. If you use two decimal places, you get 125.25 newtons. Right. So the last question says, calculate the acceleration experienced by a 1,000 kilogram car if the engine provides a driving force of 2,000 newtons and the car experiences a drag force of 500 newtons. Now I'd strongly recommend drawing a diagram if you're if you find yourself asked a question like this and you should see why shortly. Right, so draw a sketch of your car first of all and then put in the information that you're given in graphical form. The driving force, FD, is equal to 2,000 newtons. And let's say that this driving force acts to the right. So we have a 2,000 newton force acting to the right, along with a drag force, which I'm going to write as FDR, of 500 newtons. Now the drag force acts in the opposite direction to the car's motion. So if the driving force, the 2000 newtons force is acting to the right, then the drag force acts to the left. We're asked to calculate the acceleration experienced by the car, given the car's mass as well m is equal to 1,000 kilograms. Now from Newton's second law we know that the net force acting on an object is equal to its mass times the acceleration, F equals ma. So for this question we need to find the net force acting on the car. The net force is simply the difference of the two forces because they are in opposite directions. One is to the right, one is to the left. So the net force is 2000 minus 500 newtons. This is equal to the mass of the car, which is 1000 kilograms, times the acceleration, 
which is an unknown here. So let's simplify the expression a little. So we have 1500 newtons is equal to 1000 kilograms times the acceleration of the car. If we want to find the acceleration, then A is equal to 1500 newtons divided by 1000 kilograms. We're solving for A, so we carry the 1000 to the other side of the equation, to the other side of the equal sign, and since it's multiplying A on the right hand side, or RHS, then it will be dividing the 1500 newtons when you move it over to the left hand side. So for A, you get a value of 15 over 10, or 1.5 newton per kilogram, which is equal to 1.5 meters per second squared. Okay. Note that when you divide the newton, which is equal to the kilogram meter per second squared, by kilogram, these two cancel, and so your final unit is meter per second squared, which is the unit for acceleration. So the overall acceleration of the car is equal to 1.5 meters per second squared, and that's the answer to the question. All right, so thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for other videos. If you have any problems with this video, or if you found it helpful, leave us a comment. And feel free to like and share the video. Thanks for watching.